and now for your offshore and global products and services. So what differentiates global from South Africa or local is in our context, the fixed income world. So I mentioned that fixed income in South Africa essentially gives you a real return, even the short duration. Basically your cash in the bank can give you a real return. That is not true globally. And particularly over the last 10 years, the world has changed since the great financial crisis um, where interest rates were taken down in the first world to extreme levels. This had been going on prior to the uh, uh, great financial crisis in places like Japan, where they've been fighting um, very low inflation and low uh, investment growth for a very long period of time. But post the financial crisis, in, we're talking 2007, 2008, basically governments changed their policy or their, 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 their money policy. They made money or credit very cheaply available. And what that did was it drove down the real returns that you could have achieved from fixed income and it made them negative. Negative in two ways. Negative in real terms, which means below inflation, and the vast majority of what we call first world uh, e economies have got negative real interest rates. Some, and some of the biggest ones, have got negative nominal interest rates as well. So if you were to give your money to the German government for 10 years, the German bond, all right, you would get paid minus 0.42% per annum for the next 10 years. And I'm not joking. That means you're gonna get less back than you gave the German government, just so that you feel secure. That's how warped financial fixed income instruments have become around the world over the last 10 to 12 years. So you can't get the same kind of result that you can as you, in South Africa globally. So you have to look around and find other ways to extract fixed income returns and more steady returns. And here we start applying, uh, applying credit. Now we apply credit in South Africa, and what credit means is effectively you look for the best quality credit risk, all right, with the highest level of return. And then you apply that across a, a spectrum. So you would have heard of triple A. Triple A is typically a rating agency is rating something triple A, and it goes all the way down into the C, C category and, and, and below. So what we're looking for in the global sense is the highest rated, whether it's triple A, whether it's double A, A, A minus, investment grade uh, uh, quality with a higher yield. And we form that as our base case on our global investment strategy. It is more typical of your global, of your diversification model, where unlike in South Africa, we can build an entire portfolio of real returns from fixed income. We don't uh, do that globally. We do have model portfolios which are purely fixed income, but most of the money that we manage is in what I would call moderate risk or medium risk uh, 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 portfolios, balanced portfolios, where fixed income is a portion, property has exposure, you have property uh, exposure, you have bond exposure, which is the longer dated if it's appropriate, and then you have uh, equity exposure. So globally, it's quite different. Um, we also, Think about globally different from a active versus passive. Uh, uh, this is an argument that's going on in the marketplace uh, and has been for a long while. Warren Buffett famous, famously said, if you don't invest with me, invest in an index. You're likely to make some good money there. Um, what has happened with Warren since the cheapening of money okay, over the last 10 years, he's underperformed the index. For 40 years, close to 40 years prior to this period, he way outperformed. So indexation is very important. And I want to uh, just spend a few seconds on, on it. It's important for two reasons. One, it's made diversification cheap. Okay, effectively, you can get a diversified portfolio of the top 500 companies in America for a fraction of what an active manager would do. But the problem with that is, all the analysis shows that very few or very little of the growth all right, comes from the majority of those 500 companies. 
Put a different way, the top 10 companies in the S&P 500 generate the vast majority of the positive returns. So when you're buying an index, you're buying very little of the positive and a lot of the not so positive or the weaker returns. So there's two sides to, to, to every coin, as you would imagine. So it's inexpensive, but you actually buy a lot of the underperforming assets at the same time. Our analysis shows that active management globally, even though in many instances, it's been shown that it's very difficult to be consistently outperforming an index, active management in the right hands does outperform uh, uh, passive management. So we're not anti and we do embrace some passive uh, uh, investments and some smart beta, but the vast majority of our global growth portfolios are in active management. And we're very, very happy both with the track record of the managers and the portfolios that we select, as well as the, the going forward uh, scenario as well. The other and last part to talk about, and this is applicable both locally and globally, but globally more so, is we take as much risk off the table through a means of capital protection or hedging. We like to provide the growth on the upside, but as in, in, in SA, we are very much concerned about the downside. So wherever we can retain the growth or give a more predictable return, we do that. And we use uh, various financial instruments to do that. And where we use a financial instrument, it's underwritten by your, your, your top investment banks to provide extra security. Mm -hmm.